Shall we try again? Bingo! Hey, everybody, last Outrider here with the next part of the Blood Angel story. Let's get to it. In the wake of the Archangels, a demi company of the Blooded, the Blood Angels' second company, would make their landing and link up with any surviving Imperial units. Meanwhile, in orbit, the Blade of Vengeance and half of the Blood Angels' fleet would support them. This was the war zone that Dante would take charge of personally. With billions of citizens, it held the highest concentration of biomass in the entire system, and had attracted a commensurately vast swarm. Arios would be assigned to the rest of the second company, commanded by Captain Afiel, and supported by the bulk of the remaining Blood Angels vessels. Their job would be to locate any survivors from amongst the drifting mining platforms and clear the atmosphere of any gas of the gas giant of any evacuation attempts. Corbelo would accompany Afael in his assault. The sanguinary high priest had received intelligence that suggested the system's last stockpiles of the Satrix elixir lay somewhere below the Arios's swirling clouds. Corbelo meant to take that prize, if he could. The liberation of Lysios would fall to the Flesh Terrors and their fleet. Dante charged their chapter master, Gabriel Seth, with clearing the landing zone and looking for survivors. Seth offered his assurances that Lysios would be taken, and the Blood Angels chapter master had faith that the Flesh Terrors could complete their mission, despite the chapter's dire reputation. Though there was a savagery to the Flesh Terrors, there was also a nobility. They were, after all, still the scions of Sanguinius. Contemplating the ghostly icons lurking on the far side of the system, Dante dispatched a handful of strike cruisers to rescue any survivors from the Cryptus evacuation fleet. This perilous mission would fall to Captain Phaeton and would require slipping through the swarmed choke void. However, if there was a chance to save the lives of those on board the fleeing ships, then Dante would take it. These dispositions decided, the Blood Angels chapter divided its supporting armor as he saw fit. This amounted to a significant force of tanks and dreadnoughts. Thus, each prong of the Blood Angels' attack upon the Cryptus system would be well supported by versatile heavy armor. Like the glowing points of a flaming trident, the Space Marine fleet thrust into the system. The glittering edges of the Aegis Diamando reaching out to meet it. The fleet had been repelled by the psychic force of the hive mind, as the shadow of the warp enveloped the Cryptos system like a vast, dark stain upon the Immaterium. Even the sacrifice of many of their navigators had not been enough to bring them close enough to the stars to bypass the barrier. Now they were forced to sail through it. However, where the Tyranids had relied on their strange biology to survive the killing field, the Blood Angels had other means. Ancient star charts showed thermal tunnels through the Aegis. It was these routes that Dante directed his helmsmen, the fleet aiming for invisible corridors through the void. Even so, the tunnels would still Im be impossibly cold, and Dante ordered all hands to retire to their stasis sarcophagi and void vaults. Many chapter serfs 
died in the crossing. The cold stretching invisible fingers into their void vaults and stealing many of their lives. Yet enough survived to ensure the Blood Angel's fleet would remain at combat efficiency. Effectivity. Blah, blah. Within their gleaming golden coffins, the Blood Angels and Flesh Terrors felt nothing of the killing cold. Those Tyranid bioships close to the system's edge watched the Space Marine Armada approach. Myriad insectile eyes swiveling and tracking the newcomers. Strange spines and proboscis waved, probing for signs of life. They detected none within the cold metal shapes that fell towards them through the void. Sensing no immediate threat, the monsters turned their attention back to the Feast of Worlds. Three arms of the Space Marine fleet drifted in system towards the Core Worlds. As they neared their destinations, shipboard systems flickered to life, and hundreds of coffins quietly hissed open. As one, the Blood Angels and Flesh Terrors rose from their slumber and went to war. And in the next part, Prometheum Dawn. Until then, bye.